Hey everybody, welcome back to the Galloway Farm. In this video, I'm going to be making a loaf of sourdough bread using my sourdough starter that I've had going for a little less than a year now. On our channel, we also have an entire video on sourdough starter, getting it started, keeping it going, and storing it, all that good stuff. Um, so the recipe I'm going to be using today is from the Prairie Homestead. It's a very simple recipe, especially for beginners, and it uses cups instead of grams, so that just helps along during the process. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I've got my active starter here. I fed it this morning, and it's doubled in size, so I know it's ready to be used for bread. So I'm going to get a half a cup of that. And then we're gonna pour in one and a quarter cup of filtered water. And it'll help if your water is lukewarm, but never pour it in hot, cause that could prevent the um, sourdough starter from rising the dough. So we're just gonna stir this until it is all combined, until it's no longer separated into starter and water. Okay, it looks like it's combined pretty well now. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in three cups of flour, and this is unbleached all-purpose flour. Okay, I feel like that's combined pretty well so far. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in salt. We're gonna do one and a half teaspoons of salt. So we'll mix that salt in the best we can, and then we're gonna go in with our hands and combine it even more. Okay, so it's getting pretty stiff, so I'm gonna get the rest of this off my spoon, and I'll go in with my hand and just kind of push it into a ball. The biggest difference between sourdough bread and regular bread, like using yeast, is that you're not going to knead the dough. So you'll see in a second here, we're gonna stretch and fold the dough. So right now, I'm just being careful not to really try and knead it. I'm just kind of pushing it together in a ball. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. So what we're going to do now is cover this up and we're just going to let it rest for the next 30 minutes and then we'll come back. The dough is rested now for 30 minutes. So what we're going to do is, like I just said, stretch and fold the dough instead of kneading the dough. And if at this point you feel like your dough is too wet, you can always add a little bit more flour. Um, I feel like mine's pretty good consistency. But we're just gonna do this a few times until it's more in the shape of a ball. And I like to just do this while it's in the bowl. I don't like to put it on my counter for this just because it's easier, less cleanup. So now I'm gonna cover it back up and we're gonna let this sit overnight. If you're doing it during the day, it just needs to sit for 12 hours. So this is gonna sit and we'll see in the morning. Good morning. So our dough has sat overnight and as you can see, it has grown a lot. So what I'm going to do now is spread out some flour on the counter, dump it out, and then we're gonna stretch and fold it a few times. Okay. 
And with this, it does stick to the bowl really easily, so I'm going to just carefully pull it from the sides without pushing it down any. Kind of hard. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and stretch and fold it a few times. And you're just going to do this until it's in a ball shape again. One more stretch will probably do the trick there. Alright, so I'm going to let that sit for 15 minutes just to rest and then we'll come back. It's been 15 minutes, so what we're going to do now is take that same bowl that our dough had been in overnight. I'm going to place this dish towel in it, get it as smooth as you possibly can. It's going to have some wrinkles, that's okay. And then we're going to flour the dish towel and you want to make sure it's floured really good because we're going to be putting the dough back in here. Um, you could use a um, dough bowl, I just don't have one. So this works fine for me and it's free. Okay, so it's floured pretty well. So now I'm gonna take the dough into my hands and I'm gonna work it into a ball shape again, best I can, doesn't have to be perfect. All right, and then we're going to put the top of the dough or the smooth side down first and the seam side up into the bowl. And then we're going to cover that I don't know if this will fit on here, but we'll try. And we're gonna let it rise. <laughs> we're gonna let it rise again for two to three hours. It's been a little less than three hours now. So what we're gonna do is put our dough in the oven. But first, I'm going to sprinkle a thin layer of cornmeal in our Dutch oven here, and that's gonna just help prevent the bottom of the bread from scorching. So now we're going to um, dump the dough out onto the piece of parchment paper I have laid out. Mommy, hey. So now I'm going to take this knife and I'm just going to score it. You can do whatever pattern you want, nothing fancy. I'm just going to do three little slashes. Okay. Now we're going to grab the parchment paper at each corner just to make this easier. Pick it up and then put it in your Dutch oven. And we're just gonna kind of even out the parchment paper here and you can tear off any extra. And once our oven reaches 450 degrees, we're going to put the dough in the oven with the lid on. And then after about 20 minutes, we'll remove the lid, let it finish cooking for about 30 minutes, and then it'll be ready. Okay, so our oven is preheated to 450, so we're gonna go ahead and stick the bread in the oven, like I said, with the lid on. And I did also put a piece of aluminum foil on the bottom rack. What's that, what that's gonna do is help distribute the heat more evenly. Okay, so the timer just went off. It's been 20 minutes, so I'm going to now take the lid off of the Dutch oven and slide this back in, and we're gonna let it bake for 30 more minutes. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take our bread out the oven. And we're gonna put it on the cooling rack to cool for about an hour, and then we can cut it.
So that was a super simple how-to on baking sourdough bread. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. If you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe before you leave to keep up with what's going on around the farm. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye.